Hi, I'm Mike Owner, the InGroove in Phoenix, Arizona. Today I'm going to do the new arrival video for September 11th, 2020. Don't forget, all of this stuff can be purchased online on our website at www.theingroove.com. So there's actually quite a lot of releases this week. Last week was pretty slim. Everything got piled onto this week. I think the labels kind of gave everybody a week's break right after Record Store Day. Uh, the first thing I want to mention is there's only one pre-order up this week. And that is Analog Productions, The Wonderful Sounds of Male Vocals. So I've talked about this on the past on the channel, but they've done a series of these now. So they've done The Wonderful Sounds of Female Vocals, The Wonderful Sounds of Christmas. The newest title that comes the end of this month is The Wonderful Sounds of Male Vocals. It's really what these are, are audio file demo discs. If any, most everything on it is 100% analog. Some of the stuff on some of the albums was recorded digitally, so that's represented digitally on the record. But these were essentially made for demo, as demo discs. You know, if you go to any of the shows, the hi-fi shows, these are kind of the discs that permeate those hi-fi shows where people are showing off big fancy rigs because they're extremely good comps and they're put together specifically with sound quality in mind. I really did. I think this is actually going to be one of the better, you know, actually they're all, all three of them are great, but this has got Elvis, Roy Orbison, Dean Martin, Harry Belafani, Tony Joe White, Amos Lee. So you can kind of see it's kind of a demo disc as far as really strong male vocalists. But yeah, that'll come out the end of the month and that is available now on the website for pre-order. So let's get on to the new arrivals. Tons of audiophile restocks. Some good arrival, uh, arrivals that came out this week for the first time. Starting with the new Flaming Lips, American Head. Looks like a nice gatefold double disc. A little Gilberto. What is this? Lost Dog Street Band. I think that just mistakenly got in there. This is quite cool. So they're doing a whole series of reissues for Joy Division and New Order. I talked about the Power Corruption and Lies pre-order that's coming out next week. This is actually a level Terrace Apart picture disc. Leaders of Men and then the 12 inch remix on the back. Pretty cool. All right, PJ Harvey, To Bring You My Love, a record that is definitely overdue for a repress, finally here. All right, so these are going to be extremely hot. They did, this is an indie store exclusive of Nirvana's Bleach. This is a splatter wax variant. They only made 2,500 of these, but there's two different colors. This is on a blue and black marble vinyl, and this particular one here is on a red and black marble vinyl. Nirvana, one of the top five collected bands in the world. 2,500 is not a lot for a band that's collected to their caliber. Pretty cool, you can kind of see they notate that this is a special variant. And what's weird is actually put marker over the barcode, but that's on the shrink. But that's how they came. Yeah. Okay, so this is the tail end of, this was a super limited exclusive, Elliot Smith. This is the hardcover indie exclusive book. Uh, let's see, 52 page, hard pound, 52 page hardbound double LP coffee table book of rare and previously unseen photos. 25th anniversary remastered from original source material. And then it also, the second LP includes the earliest known live solo recording from September 17th, 1994. So I got a few more of those and they never sent me my whole order. So that kind of filled it in. Okay, so I talked about these Dire Straits reissues on a video a couple of weeks ago and they sold out pretty quick, but this is a restock. These are quite nice because 
You've got the Mobile Fidelity versions. They're 45 RPM. They're still the best I've ever heard these albums. But these are 33 RPM and they're extremely good. I import these from Europe because these are on much, much higher quality vinyl than our American counterparts. The American counterparts, I went through endless copies of the first album. Every one was extremely noisy, riddled with no fill and other pr pressing defects. These are on significantly higher quality vinyl from back to black. Significantly higher quality vinyl, but they use the same original analog metal stampers that were cut by Bernie Grunman. Still extremely, extremely good sound quality. So yeah, that's going to be, I've got the first four albums. So you've got self-titled, Making Movies, uh, Communique, and Love Over Gold. This is not, this is an album that I've had, it's been around for a while, but I've not been able to easily get it recently. But I finally got it back. It's the Eagles' greatest hits. A lot of people say, hey, what's a good audiophile type record I can get on the cheap? Well, it's this one. This is $24.99. This was cut from the original analog master tapes. Uh, yeah, for 25 bucks, a nice analog record, embossed cover. Another record, extremely popular, very hard to get here recently. Buena Vista Social Club. This is cut by Bernie Grunman again from the original analog master tapes. Vinyl Me Please recently did this. Uh, it was on brown vinyl, a little bit noisy. I'm a I love Vinyl Me Please as far as uh, some of that analog stuff that they do. Unfortunately, you got to get stuck with some of the filler stuff that I'm not a huge fan of, but they did this on brown vinyl. But this is the standard all analog issue cut by Bernie Grunman. So, another analog issue box set. You know, you really got to be into this era of Fleetwood Mac. Fleetwood Mac 73 to 74, so this is going to be before Buckingham and Nick's join. But so you've got Penguin, Mystery to Me, Heroes Are Hard to Find. But the best thing about this box, besides the fact that it's all analog, is it includes a, let's see what it says, a previously unreleased live show from the record plant. It is a double disc. It's, December 15th, 1974. Uh, really, what looks like, sound, you know, looks like a really, really strong Black Magic Woman. Oh, well, looks like a really strong set list. But yeah, and a bonus seven inch single mastered from original analog tapes. I've heard many good things about this box, but I haven't heard it myself. I showed this on the channel a couple of weeks ago. The response has been extremely good. This is a local group, Canelmas. This is back in stock. Uh, a really, really spacey psych album from the early 70s. The most expensive vinyl LP if you find an original that ever came out of the state of Arizona. Easy, easy thousand dollar record when you find it, but more than likely 13 to 1500 if you find an original. They are extremely difficult. I've never seen one in the wild. Really, really good. Many people have emailed me and told me how great it was and asked for more recommendations similar to this. Unfortunately, this is a fantastic album. It's in the Asset Archives. There's not a ton of great records like this. I can recommend you two. All right, Money Jungle. This is, you know, a lot of the Tone Poets, I get e emailed on these, a lot of the Tone Poets, because they're pressed at RTI in California and they were shut down, have been backordered. And some stuff I see trending for 50, 60 to $100. None of the Tone Poets are out of print as far as I know. They're not that old. They're not going to be out of print this fast. But one of the better titles, Money Jungle. Duke Ellington, Charles Mingus. It's a really, you can hear the frustration in their playing in this. Really solid Tone Poet, back in stock. I showed this last week. Everybody that I talked to on preferred the box set. So I got a lot more of these box sets in stock. So the box set, essentially you get the original remixed album. You're going to get the rarities and alternative mixes, which have the three new tracks on it. But the best thing about this particular deluxe box is you get the entire Brussels affair, the concert from 1973. 
a really good show. I've listened to this. I've listened to that Brussels concert like five or six times in the last week. It is extremely, extremely good. All right, so the doors, waiting for the sun, restock from Analog Production. So some interesting things happen with this. All of these titles, except for Soft Parade, dried up. Nobody had them. None of the online retailers. And I started noticing what these titles were actually going for. And I was skeptical that they were going out of print, but I thought, you know, it might be a possibility. A lot of these analog reissue labels don't tell you when things go out of print. When things go out of print, you can't get them anymore. That's kind of how you find out. A few people emailed me on it. I went online. I started looking at what some of the completed listings on these were. They did a box set originally of these that included nothing more than the six albums, and it came in a box. As of about last week, I noticed that, or maybe it was oh, two weeks ago when I looked, those box sets were selling, and they originally were $400 retail. I saw completed sold listings between $1,000 and $1,200. Since then, this title has come back in print, and that's going to drive the price of that box set down. But what that's telling me, and it should be telling you guys, is when these things finally do add a lot of print, there is going to be huge demand for them, and these things are going to skyrocket in price. I have Waiting for the Sun back in stock. Do not sleep on these. I'm guessing all of them will come back in stock. If this came back, they're all going to come back. Again, pressing time is limited because of COVID, but don't sleep on this because you will eventually be ruining the day you did if you want it in the future because it seems like this is going to be you know, the box set's going for 1200 It's not really technically out of print. you got to figure when these things do go out of print, they're going to double immediately. And they, I see $150 to $200 in the future on these records. I mean, out of the albums in the box set, I mean, that's essentially they're going for about 200 bucks if you were to do a break on that. And it's not like with the box set you're getting. I mean, they were, you know, there's no extra bonus tracks or material. There's no separate discs in it. So, yeah. Another restock from the top 10 analog in print R&B and blues records you should own. A really good, really fun, extremely solid blues record by Slim Harpo. Baby Scratch My Back, Raining In My Heart, an extremely good record. A good record if you're not even into the blues. This is a great electrified, you know, it's not like country blues. It's a great electrified blues. So if you're listening to rock, you could easily dig that. Another restock, Otis Blue. This is from the top 10 analog in print R&B and soul records that you should own. Got some more of those back in stock. Also, Dream with Dean from the top 10 analog in print rock and pop records you should own. And again, stop emailing me. Dean Martin is a pop artist. Although this is more of a jazz record, but Dean Martin is categorized as categorized as pop. The reason this is more of a jazz record is unlike his other albums, this is really the album he did that had a proper jazz band on it. You know, a lot of the pop artists of the days, Nat King Cole, uh, Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, they were backed by essentially orchestra slash jazz bands, but this was a really proper solid band. Barney Kessel, Red Mitchell on bass. Fantastic record. Dean Martin's voice is made for analog. It sounds absolutely fantastic. Should be in everybody's collection. That was out of print for an extremely long time, and it's finally back. So, <laughs> Mobile Fidelity. I, you know, people complained for years and years and years that they never took a lot of opportunity to do anything other than the same old hashed out audio file recordings. I'm not a Twisted Sister fan. I did listen to this. This sounds extremely good, although I've not listened to, you know, 40 different versions of Stay Hungry. This sounds fantastic. Musically, you know, I put, I got to We're Not Gonna Take It, and I'm like, all right, that, that was awesome. I love the hit, and then I changed it, but this is one of these super limited mobile fidelities. They only did 3,000 of these, so it just seems like lately, with the way things are going with audio file records, this is kind of a no-brainer, you know, it, it's 
it's not in print in any other version, and originals of this have gotten quite expensive. Hair metal in the store is extremely popular. I cannot keep Twisted Sister, Cinderella, I mean, nothing. You can, not White Snake, Molly, you cannot keep that stuff in stock. It never makes it out of the used bin and into, you know, from the new arrival into the used bins. So I talked to you guys about the wonderful sounds of female vocals and then the new pre-order, the wonderful sounds of male vocals that's coming out at the end of the month. The wonderful sounds of Christmas. If you like, you know, Christmas albums sell extremely well, you get closer to Christmas. The problem with that though, is when you get towards like October, November, you know, you're not gonna find, you, you never, you can't get the solid Christmas albums. It's hard to find, you know, Charlie Brown's Christmas, uh, the Phil Spector Christmas comp, anytime they do the Motown reissues, you never find those. Elvis's Christmas albums, uh, Bing Crosby, because they sell out. It seems like no matter what, every single year they never make enough of them. Now is the time to be buying something like this if you want to be listening to Christmas music around Christmas time. But this is essentially an audiophile analog Christmas comp. It's actually extremely good. Played the absolute ever living hell out of this thing last year. It was on the turntable relentlessly. Bing Crosby's White Christmas, it's got Ella Fitzgerald, it's got a lot of the Charlie Brown soundtrack, Vince Guaraldi Trio, uh, Chet Atkins doing Jingle Bell Rock, Jose Feliciano, Feliz Navidad. Uh, just absolutely fantastic. Audiophile. Audio file, yeah, Christmas album. And get it now because in another month, month and a half, same thing, sold out. So I don't know if you guys have noticed all of the Bob Dylan mobile fidelity stuff is starting to go out of print. And it's comical because the albums that I had on the shelf for 50 bucks a month ago, people are coming back and trading them in and you look online, they're 150 bucks, $200 for some of these albums. So I'm getting what I can from the tail end of what is still available from Mobile Fidelity. So I got a couple of restocks, but this is, this stuff is pretty much done, guys. So get whatever you can. A lot of what's left is the mono stuff, which is fine. It's absolutely fantastic and it's significantly more limited. For instance, I've got the mono, uh, what is this? This is, so this is the stereo and this is the mono. But the stereo was an unlimited number in the mono, they did 3,000 of. John Wesley Harding, this is mono, number to 3,000. This is a fantastic Bob Dylan record, and I actually really dig the mono mix of this. One of the rarest, actually probably the rarest Bob Dylan in mono. Extremely hard to find. I don't think I've ever had an original mono of this album walk in the door. I dig the mix on the mono. It's uh, the bass is a lot more pronounced on this in mono. So, still available, John Wesley Harding and the two self-titles in stereo and mono. Also, the Elvis Costello stuff is in the process of going out of print. A lot of these titles have already shot up over $100. They've been out a while, but yeah, they're on the way out. 404, some more of these. Was out of stock for a while and it's kind of kind of back for now. Restock on some of the Tone Poets from last week. It's time. Probably the absolute best Blue Note cover of all time and a fantastic album. Jackie and Herbie Hancock is on it. Another restock. Men at Work. I think Cargo might have been deleted. So I think we were probably on the tail end of this stuff as well. Another tone poet from last week, the kicker. Got that back in stock. And Linda Ronstadt. Heart like a wheel. I sold out of these pretty quick. I finally got I got the rest of my order this week. God, this is another one though. Although I don't think it's out of print, it's not gonna be around much longer because I mean 2017 dated, and I feel like this has been out longer than that. I'd have to look online. Also a really hot 
reissue from Mobile Fidelity, Weezer Blue, the best-selling Mobile Fidelity title of all time, I believe. They have sold a ton of these. It sells extremely well. It's always seems like it's out of stock, awaiting a repress. But yeah, I got a few of these in last week, blew through those immediately. I got a few more of these this week. This is on the marbled blue vinyl. Pretty cool, pretty cool color. You don't see a lot of audiophile colored vinyl as well, but this is one of them. Okay, most of her catalog has already gone out of print. Some of it started to creep up. Also, a restock on the Get Galbarto Louis Armstrong on 33 RPM. The 45, fantastic sounding. The 45 is still the better of the two versions of this you can get, but for 35 bucks, it sounds fantastic. It's all analog, it's single disc, you don't have to flip it. And I've actually really been playing this quite a bit more. Louis Armstrong meets Oscar Peterson. Uh, really good recording. There's a couple of parts on the album where he's, you know, the engineer didn't properly set the microphone gain, I'm assuming, because it kind of distorts out on his voice, but it's kind of minor. I don't think it's a major issue. And it's, I listen to my classic version and some other represses of that, and it's on all the albums, so not a big deal. I know somebody emailed me and said they might have a defective pressing. That's just the nature of that particular recording. You can kind of tell when he's getting close to the microphone and getting loud, it kind of cuts out, but it's most people probably aren't even going to notice it until I told them just now. But yeah, there it is. Tons of refu restocks. A lot of cool new arrivals. We're getting close to record store day drop number two. I'm going to start doing more videos on that, unboxings. Uh, yeah, and we're going to do it all over again. I'm kind of curious what's going to happen as far as, so we got drop one, two, and three. Typically, you would have Black Friday record store day. They haven't announced anything for that. I have no idea whether or not that's going to take place. You know, I heard a lot of stores are not going to be doing any Black Friday sales. Uh, I don't know if Record Store Day is going to throw in the towel on that. You know, it might have been one of those things that the Record Store Day Black Friday titles were never made. So maybe that gets canceled. I'm not sure. But we'll at least have three months in a row of Record Store Day drop one, two, and three. Maybe we get something for Black Friday. You know, there was a couple of titles on that Record Store Day list that came off. Some stuff got issued. Some stuff like the Rolling Stones Let It Bleed. But, you know, I think there was 950 of them as a special handmade vinyl was the blurb. That's dropped off to the face of the earth. We, I, mean, I have no idea. I assumed it was going to get pushed to Black Friday. But at this point, no clue. All right, guys. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Until next time.